Hello everyone, and welcome to my second tier list video for characters that I have read. And once again, these are characters chosen by you, the audience, because I, I think I would make it too easy for myself if I was able to just choose the characters myself. So let's get into it. So the way OBS recorded my screen for this was really weird, and sometimes like it didn't, it recorded like the left two thirds of my screen and didn't go all the way down. I tried to like edit the window to make it as good as possible, but sometimes there are people who go out of frame. Sorry, but the, the alternative was to scrap this really long tier list and re-record it, which would just mean the video never happened. So it is what it is. Obviously, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, because if this video was spoilers, you would have to have read truly a lot of books to be able to watch this video. Not just a lot of books, but a very precise group of books, some of which I don't even recommend that much. Anyways, we are going to go into it, and we have a great character to start off with, even though I have it spelt wrong it is and no mandarake and i i have this all set up so you guys can do the tier list if you want i am curious to see it obviously you will have to make another category which is i haven't read them but i'm curious to see where these are i have conveniently labeled everyone because every time i go to do a character tier list about 90 percent of the time is me trying to figure out who someone is and the other 10 percent is me being like okay they're this good anyways and no Mander Rake, I have it spelt wrong, is amazing. And Mander Rake is obviously one of the most iconic Malazan Book of the Fallen characters. He would be one of my favorite Malazan Book of the Fallen characters. We obviously do not get deep into his head, but he just has such presence. He's a badass, and you just you gotta love Anamander Rake. Every scene he's in kicks ass, and he steals every scene he is in. Next, we have... Uh, Emery Anden, who is one of the, uh, one of the primary characters in the Greenbone saga. Wouldn't be my favorite Greenbone character, but they tend to almost all be pretty excellent. For now, I'm gonna put him, I'm gonna put Anden in great. Uh, I, I would have, I think, Hilo, who someone did put, I, for those who didn't see, I had a community tab where people could put these. Someone did put Hilo. So if you're watching this and you're the one who put Hilo, well, he wasn't fast enough. Um, there'd be a few Greenbone characters I would put above Anden, but Anden still has a really excellent character arc, really distinctive character. We really see him through a large point of his life. Great dude. Next we have Andros Guile, uh, who's from Lightbringer and is one of the most popular series from Lightbringer. I'm going to make people angry at me and I'm going to put him in fine. I don't like Andros Guile. Um, I find he's supposed to be like this super intelligent and like smart guy. He never felt smart to me. It always just felt like he could do whatever the hell he wanted, stupid or smart. And Brent Weeks would just find a way to make whatever he said end up be right. And I just, I just don't buy that he's very, that smart. I don't know what he actually did that smart and then there's some stuff with him in the last two books it's late lightbringer we don't need to get into that anyways not even not a top 15 lightbringer character for me i don't like him um obviously he actually is one of the most popular lightbringer characters and next we have aquitanus attis a character from codex alera who's like not even a main character at all from Codex Alera. I could not find any artwork for him, so I have a Roman dude. Um, it's it's a random statue of a famous Roman dude. If anyone can tell me in the comments, um, under spoiler bars, because it is Alera spoilers, if anyone can tell me both who this is and why I picked this person. Because I did. I googled statue of this person to get the image. I don't know what I'll give you, but I'll at least pin your comment, and you can be very proud of yourself for figuring it out. Um, but, uh, so he's a side character, but he's a Jim Butcher side character. He's a good character. Uh, he's 
I, it really will show up. He, you see more from him later in the series, but he's good. And now I can't read. Ah, it's Asmodean. Uh, so when I had this, I had a Google form. People can answer and fill it out. And it had like two people. And then suddenly I checked and it had 20. Because Kid Cozy, you may recognize him from Discord or the comments, put in Asmodean 15 times because he loves Asmodean. <clears throat> Asmodean is one of the Forsaken in Wheel of Time, and I'm going to make people... He's good. I don't love Asmo... No, he's good. He's... I, I just... I don't love Asmodean that much. He's good. He's fine. Um, he's a cockroach. He is just very self-interested. I don't know. Uh, he's a good side character slash antagonist. I, I, I'm I sorry, I don't love Asmodean that much. And next we have people who are continuing to kind of troll me a little bit. We have Axes the Collector, uh, who is a Stormlight character from one of the interludes. Uh, probably has 10 pages of page time total for the entire series. But you know what? I don't even care. Those 10 pages are good. He's wildly entertaining. He is an immortal who is wandering Roshar and trying to get evidence and, like, document the various spren. He's just so fun. So I'm putting him there. And next we have Basander Lin. Wow, all these characters that a bunch of people aren't going to know. Well, a lot of people know who Asmodean is. But Basander Lin is a Sun Eater character who I really like Basander Lin. Uh, I think he's an excellent character. Ah, man, is it dumb to put Bassander Lin in great? I kind of want to put Bassander Lin in great. I'm putting him in above Asmodean, but I'm not putting him in great. I don't even care. Uh, Bassander Lin is kind of a, a foil for Hadrian, but obviously Sun Eater's first person retrospective, it's kind of like Bassander Lin would actually probably like narrator Harry, Hadrian more than like the young Hadrian he meets. I think he's a really good side character. Anyways, uh, next we have Baez, first of the Magi, who is going to be the highest person on this list so far. Not quite an all-time favorite. Also, looking at this, less people are going to get thrown into the sun than they did last time. So people didn't pick characters they know I hate as much this time. But anyways, Baez is obviously, he's the, he's the wizard from the first law. I'm not going to say that much about Baez. I will let you meet Baez on your own, but, oh, you gotta love Baez. Some of, um, some just amazing interactions. Like, he's, he adds so much to the story of the First Law. He's one of the most important characters in the First Law. He's just, he's, he's Joe Abercrombie Gandalf, and, yeah, it's amazing. And next, we have Bella, who's a horse, okay? And someone has picked Bella because there are a lot of memes about Bella in Wheel of Time. About how Bella is like magic or the creator, whatever. Bella is a horse. It feels mean to put Bella in bad. Because Bella is a well-written horse, but Bella is not barely a character at all. I'm putting Bella in fine. Like, Bella's barely a character. Anyways, sorry, Wheel of Time fans, but it's true. Like, I'm ranking these people based on how I think they are as characters. She's a great meme. She's an amazing meme, and she is a fine character. Well, the thing is, I can't put her in bad. Like, I can't put her in a group that's negative, because it's not like she's a badly written horse. I'm just not giving her anything positive. Anyways, as these colors are kind of backwards. Maybe I can do some editing magic. Just to be clear, by editing magic, I do not mean I'm going to go back and edit it so it looks like this. I have, for all of it, I have no idea how to do that. I just mean I'm going to... By magic, I mean, like, just cutting out a section of the section of me fixing that. Anyways, next we have Blaze, who is the protagonist for a song uh, it, uh, for Our Bone by Guy Gavril K. The, the green Guy Gavril K standalone. Well, there are two. The one on the left. The bigger one that's also apparently the better one, because it is excellent. Review for that on my channel. I might link it in the description, or I can just pull a derfy and say, Google a song for Air Bone by Jake Bishop, and or YouTube search, and my video will come up. And we're going to put Blaze in amazing, but we're going to put him behind... 
But Blaze is a wonderful protagonist. I, I love Blaze. Man, I, I can't put him above Rake, though. And I can't put him above Baez. I, I might put... No, do, Rake or Baez? I'm believing that it was it is. Anyways, Blaze, wonderful protagonist. Not quite my favorite Guy Gavril K character, but up there. And one of them. Wonderful journey. Wonderful development. Just a badass guy. Great dude has a funny internal monologue you meet him in like chapter one and there's actually some really funny stuff guy gavril k humor not talked about enough and next we have boromir from the lord of the rings you know boromir kind of has a point like at first glance the plan of send the hobbit into mordor to destroy the ring really does look kind of bad and all he does is he underestimated the corruptive how corrupt like how much the ring can corrupt people and so he was like we should take it to gondor boromir is a great character i'm putting him up here uh he's actually one of my favorite characters in fellowship and yeah i think he's wonderful and next we have brienne of tarth from a song of ice and fire another very good character there are some people who like brienne enough that when she's doing nothing they like those chapters just because it's brienne I like Brienne. I don't like Brienne that much. But Brienne is going to be great above Boromir. She's just a badass. You got to love Brienne. Next we have Waldo Butters from the Dresden Files. Who It's Dresden. It's one of my favorite series. Butters peaks early to me. He, I think, is a well-realized character. He's just kind of annoying at times. Um, he's actually, like, he's one of my least favorite, like, main Dresden characters. I, I'm i putting him in fine, but above Andros Guile, because screw you, Andros Guile. Um, and next we get our first Robin Hobb character, Chade Fallstar, who is going to go straight to the top of Amazing. Chade is the the dude in the shadows the guy who gets shit done in buck keep castle and the six duchies jade man like the amount of times what i or you or people as the reader like the how many times what you think about jade changes like is truly extraordinarily like your perspective he's probably the person who fits his perspective changes the most on and as fits is our lens that we see Chade through, our perspective does as well. He's, I know I just put him in the top of Amazing. He's not among my favorite Realm of the Elmlings characters. He's not, like, contending for the favorite, but he's still an amazing character. Next we get Clef. Clef is the key in the Foundry side uh, cover, and I like Clef. I'm going to put Clef in good. Clef is a sentient object. I'm going to put him above Axes. Uh, Clef is really fun. Um, Clef has a cool backstory. Uh, I, yeah, I like Clef. I don't think Clef is anything, like, completely extraordinary. And next we have two Crispins. And the first is Crispin from the Sun Eater, who is the younger brother of Hadrian Marlowe, who is not on this list. Someone did put Hadrian Marlowe. They just didn't put Hadrian Marlowe fast enough, damn it. So we got Crispin. We got the Lesser Devil instead. And the Lesser Devil is good. Um, I like Crispin. I think he's a good character. I don't like the Lesser Devil nearly as much as the Hadrian point of view stuff. It was really interesting to get his perspective. But he's just he's not one of my favorite Sun Eater characters. Uh, that comes later. Hi, Valka. I could have used the new cover for you. I could have made the new image. But I made this before that cover came out. Anyways, next... We have Crispin, the Kais Crispin. I don't know what I want to say. Anyways, the protagonist of the Serentine Mosaic, who's like, oh, this guy, he is, um, he gets hired to build a mosaic. He kind of has a temper, but like, he doesn't tend to act super rationally. He's just, I love Crispin. He's my favorite guy, Gavro K character. I'm going to put him in all-time favorites. I, he's such an amazing character. I love him. I just, I finished Lord of Emperors a couple days ago, and it's like, it's probably going to be my book of the year. And 
he isn't the main reason it's going to be the book of the year because everything in that book is just like brilliant. But having the this as a protagonist is part of it. He's low all time favorites. Like he's close to amazing. But I'm screw it. I'm putting him an all time favorite. Next we have Croker. The protagonist of the Black Company, and for any Black Company fans watching this, uh, you know I've read three books in the Black Company, so I am judging him based on where I am, which is that I finished The White Rose, but have not read past that. And Croker is great. I really like. Maybe even higher. Uh, no, we'll leave him there. Uh, Croker, we're reading his annals, primarily, while reading, which... Uh, like, it's the history of the company. And a lot of the time, he does not... Uh, he doesn't tell us exactly what's going on in his head. But when he does, it's always so amazing. Um, he's like the old grizzled soldier. He's uh, he. You can tell Steven Erickson likes Croker based on how many characters kind of like him. He wrote in Malaz and Book of the Fallen. He's kind of... My guess would be one of the inspirations for Fiddler. A lot of people's favorite Malaz and character. Uh... Yeah, great character. I love Croker. And again, we have an animal companion, and this time we have Kraft. But this time we do get an animal companion who can talk. This is the crow from Faithful and the Fallen. Who's good. He's just entertaining. Like, you gotta like Kraft. He's just like... Kraft is just entertaining. Next, we have Dabid from the Stormlight Archives. Because, of course. Because, of course, we're gonna have Bella... And Dabid. I guess we do have more Stormlight characters, but uh, I see the first time people attempted to troll me by giving me characters I hated, which played right into my trap. This time, trolled slightly more successfully by just giving. Okay, Dabid. Dabid is pretty great. Uh, Dabid, if you're not far enough into Stormlight, you'll be confused. Keep in mind, I love basically the entire cast of Stormlight. For me, it's one of the deepest casts in all of fantasy, where you can go 50 characters down, like my 50th favorite Stormlight character, might be Dabid, who knows, and I still think they're great. I'm gonna, I'm not putting them above Crispin. Um, I can't put them above, no, I'll put it, I'll keep them below uh, Bormir. But, I love Dabid, he's a great character. He, he really is one of the people who kind of shows Brandon's ability to just make you love a character when who you didn't care about that much. And also make you realize, wait, 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 this guy's been this dude this entire time. I just didn't realize it. Anyways, next, we have Dalinar Colin, who's going to surprise no one and go straight into all-time favorites. My second favorite character in my second favorite series. Uh, Dalinar, especially with Oathbringer as his book, but also on Reread, he improves the most as Reread. The former war criminal general whose brother the king has died and now... Uh, Alokar, anyways, Dalinar, I mean, you guys have read Stormlight, you know Dalinar's awesome, maybe you haven't read Stormlight, hi Alan, you're the only one here who hasn't read Stormlight, I know they're long, but you'll read them quickly, what's up? Uh, yeah, he's obviously, he's one of my all-time favorites, before I read Realm of the Elderlings, he would have been like in my top five favorite characters of all time, yeah, he's easy, easy all-time favorite. Next we have Euron Greyjoy. So if you watched the show only, you'd be like, oh, Euron, this character is just so annoying and, like, his entire character is just making dick jokes. But no, Euron is a fantastic antagonist. Uh, he's mysterious as all hell. Uh, he, like, his dialogue is cryptic. He's just spooky, okay? He spooks his way into great. He's iconic. If the series gets continued... He has potential to be one of the best, like, antagonists in the genre. And we come to Frodo Baggins. One of the most iconic characters in fantasy, even though Sam is arguably almost more iconic than he is. But Frodo, I'm obviously rereading The Lord of the Rings right now. Uh, I'm a little bit into Return of the King. And my opinion of Frodo has gone up a lot on reread. Frodo is... At first, is not particularly gung-ho about the whole adventure idea, but he kind of, you know, anyone can be the the hero when they've got, like, a magic sword and can kick ass and, like, naturally want to do that. Frodo is the person who just wanted to stay home, read some books, and chill, but he keeps going on his quest. He's also kind of cheeky. Um, I'd forgotten about this, how cheeky some of the hobbits are, where one point he's asking, like, an elf for advice, and the elf is like... Um, 
goes like, oh yeah, maybe you should do this, but on the other hand, don't. You do not meddle in the affairs of wizards, for they are subtle and quick to anger. And Frodo's just like, yeah, they also say, do not go to elves for help, because like they'll say yes and no. And it's like, Frodo's cheeky. So Frodo is great. I'm putting him above Croker. I'm going to put him there. Uh, I used to not be the biggest Frodo fan. Uh, he was, I, I found him one of the less interesting Lord of the Rings characters, but I'm really appreciating Frodo more. He's still not one of my all-time favorite protagonists. I still like some of the side cast of Lord of the Rings more, but Frodo is still great. And next we have Gaetona, who is the second most important character in The Emperor's Soul, who is kind of the old man, uh, the one kind of semi-honest advisor to the Empire, but still somewhat close-minded about this entire thing. We're going to put him in the top of great. I basically consider The Emperor's Soul perfect. It's one of my favorite novels ever. I love Gautona. The amount that uh, Brandon was able to do in like a hundred pages with a character who was not the main character and only has like ten pages of POV time because it's almost all for one page. It's just brilliant. Next we have Geralt of Rivia, the protagonist of The Witcher. I still haven't watched season two of The Witcher. I watched episode one. Uh, I just don't watch that much TV. Um, so The Witcher. Oh, uh, this is, it's been... I just noticed how much nicer I... I haven't been nicer. I just... There hasn't been characters I really hate. Uh, but Geralt, I've been uh, notoriously mixed on The Witcher. I am among the people who found the politics and the scheming and, like, the larger story of the main series to just be boring. But when it's following Geralt, I really enjoy it because I think Geralt is an excellent protagonist with a really interest, really interesting morality. Uh, he tends to, he's actually a, an extremely principled character, but at first he almost feels like the opposite of principles because his principles are so bizarre. Like he will not take money to kill people. Like that's wrong. Like he won't do it. But like, if you spill his drink, like sometimes you got to shank someone. Uh, he obviously has amazing relationships and voice. Uh, so book Geralt and show Geralt is great. Great stuff, Geralt. Next we come to Gideon the Ninth, the protagonist of Gideon the Ninth, the Locked Tome trilogy. If, uh, if you look at my channel, scroll down a little bit. You will see that I'm not a fan of this book. In fact, I hate this book. I hate reading it. Uh, I don't think Gideon is awful, though. Um, I hate many aspects of this book. I don't find Gideon particularly funny. Man, at times, I, I just... Gideon just gets on my nerves. She's just... It's like the author is trying so hard to make her, like kind of like funny and like clever and so maybe I dislike the word bad here because I think Gideon is a good execution of what she's trying to be but I dislike reading about Gideon so I'm gonna put Gideon in bad I am not throwing Gideon into the sun she is not close to my least favorite aspect of the book Gideon the ninth I just do not enjoy reading her perspective just at all Next, we get to Gimli, who I cheated to have on this list. Gimli shouldn't be on this list based on the rules I set. Uh, he missed by a few spots, but I was like, screw it. I want Gimli because I love Gimli. Uh, Gimli is, this is going to sound crazy, literally in contention for my favorite Lord of the Rings characters. Specifically, like, he hasn't done much in Return of the King, but in Two Towers and Fellowship. Like, let me just, one second. Okay, editing magic. We have Lord of the Rings. Yes, I'm about to read a passage from Lord of the Rings. It's from the chapter Riders of Rohan in Two Towers. I guess if you are avoiding Lord of the Rings spoilers, just like scroll forward to when Gimli is has been moved onto the tier list. But this is Gimli. He is surrounded by the Riders of Rohan and a um and Aemer, who all have spears pointed at him and are like, oh, you went through like. Lothlorien, oh, oh, we've heard suspicious things about Galadriel. And this is what Gimli says. Are you ready for this? Then Aomer, son of Aomond, third marshal of the Rittermark, let Gimli the dwarf 
Gloin's son warn you against foolish words. You speak evil of that which is fair beyond the reach of your thoughts, and only little wit can excuse you. Also, Gimli's smooth. Uh, he got three hairs from Galadriel. I haven't read the Silmarillion, but I've heard that signif significant. And this man is smooth, and in the movies, he lost the competition at Helm's Deep. He won, fair and square. He got 42. Legolas got 41. It was not BS. So Gimli is amazing. No. No, I've gone too far. He's great. He's great. I love Gimli. Anyways. San Dan Glockta, one of the main protagonists of the First Law trilogy. So if you have heard me talk about the First Law, you know which tier he's going to be in. The question is where. I don't like him as much as Dalinar. Um, I, I, he, he's one of the most distinctive voices like in all of fantasy in general. Probably in contention for the most unique premise to a character as well. For those of you who don't know, Glockta was a protege protege, fencer, slash swordsman, and in his, this is before the trilogy starts, but before, like, in his first ever battle, he got captured and tortured for, like, two years, and was made a cripple, and then after being made a cripple, he looked at his resume, and he was just like, I'm not qualified for anything, except torturing, because, uh, cruelty is a skill, uh, taught by experience of it. I just butchered a quote from a book. Let me know in the comments if you still recognize the quote and can tell me what book it's from. If so, uh, you get nothing but a gold star and I might pin your comment. Do I like Glockta more than Crispin? I think I probably do. Glossba, Glockta has the aspect about him that I can read Glockta doing anything. I'm not, I'm not as emotionally attached as Glockta as I am with Crispin though. Was I ever bored in a Crispin chapter though? No, so you don't screw it. Crispin's higher. Um, I like Crispin more, because I can also read about Crispin doing nothing, but, uh, Glockta, he's not someone who, like, when he feels sad, it makes me, like, deeply emotionally attached, but he might be, like, the most interesting character in fantasy, in terms of, like, how vivid and distinctive his voice is. He's, he's an all-time favorite. I love Glockta. And next we get Hoyd, from the Cosmere, who is, uh... The guy who makes a lot of cameos, but also is a wonderful character. Uh, I know I have... He he was pr probably... Pri he, the Fool from Farseer was his... From Realm of the Elder Links was like his primary inspiration. And he has a lot of similarities role-wise to the Fool. Uh, when I reread Way of Kings in the end of 2021... I was kind of worried that, like, I'd, the Hoyd scenes, I'd just be like, this is Fool. One thing I noticed is, like, how actually distinctive his personality and priority is from the Fool. Hoyd is is an amazing character. In terms of, like, how much doing more with less and how, like, little dialogue and actual scenes he gets to how good he is, I'm going to put him below Rake, who also does a lot with very little. But I'm going to have Hoyd extraordinarily high. I love Hoyd. He's amazing. And he gets to go in that tier. Next, we have Jahane, who is one of the main characters from The Lions of Al Rasan by Guy Gavriel K, who is a physician and has a lot of stuff going on. One of my favorite Guy Gavriel K characters, not up there with Crispin or Dianora. Uh, similar to Blaze tier, I'm going to put Jahane below Blaze, but I think Jahane is amazing. I, in general, love Guy Gavril K's characters, as I do love most aspects of his writing, and Jahane is one of my favorite characters in the lines of Al Rasson. And we have Kaladin, who is an all-time favorite and is gonna go uh, first on this list. He's going to the top of all-time favorite. He, uh, I mean, Oathbringer is my least favorite Stormlight book, literally just because, probably because it has less Kaladin. Uh, all, ev like... He's just one of my favorite protagonists in fiction. The common, like, the amount of ways where he is a contradiction but feels like a distinctive person and, like, his own character. The the soldier slash surgeon. The, 
I, I, I mean, you know, as I said, almost all of you have read Stormlight. This isn't surprising. Uh, he's in my, he along with Glockta are both on my top character list. I believe they're both in the top five. Uh, and next we have Kennet, who was not in my top character list. So this may surprise some people who don't talk to me on Discord, but he wasn't on the top character list because it was one per series. He is actually probably my, like one of my, maybe my top favorite characters of all time even, like, not restricting to one per series. And he's actually Kaladin. Your reign on top has, uh, has ended. Kennet is... There are a lot of characters who, uh, have been sold to me as, like, they're a bad person, but you're actually, like, still emotionally invested in them. And it's, it's rarely true. It's not true for Glockta. He's a bad person who's extremely interesting. I'm not emotionally invested in him. Kennet is that. Kennet is a bad person. Kennet is not a great character. Kennet is, like, he's an antagonist. He's... I think the best antagonist in the genre, he's the most, I, I think the most multifaceted and complex character that I have ever read. He's not my favorite just because he's, he's a bastard. Like, he sucks. But in terms of, like, how layered someone is and how unique it is to be in his head, and this is one reason why I would like live ship in third person more than I actually like any of the f first person stuff because you can see Kenneth both in his own perspective and in other people's perspectives. And literally from chapter one, you can see that the what he shows is not the same as what's going on in his head. So your opinions on Kennet can like leapfrog just by sw being like, oh, Kennet's actually being like this thing. And then you switch to Kennet's perspective and you realize what he's actually thinking. And then you realize what was actually going on for the previous chapter. He's He is an all-time favorite. No brainer. I think he. I think he's gonna stay the highest on this list. I mean, it doesn't have uh, Fitz the Fool or Harry. So, anyways, uh, or Althea does it have Althea? No, Althea would have been A. Anyways, we're moving on to Lanfear. Um, I will have you know that for the next two things, finding art for Lara Wraith and Lanfear, I don't want to get demonetized, guys. Um, Lanfear also one of the Forsaken. I'm going to put Lanfear in... I like Lanfear. I don't think Lanfear is like a spectacular antagonist in any way. Um, it feels weird putting Lanfear below Kraf, so I feel like I can't do that. But even though Axies the Collector is 10 pages, I don't even care. I'm putting uh, Lanfear below Axies the Collector because you know what? Those 10 pages were incredibly entertaining. Next we get Lara Wraith, who visually very similar to Lanfear. Uh, the white uh, court vampire from the Dresden Files. The uh, Jim Butcher writes better frenemies than he does antagonists. He writes some of the best frenemies. And Lara, Lara is like one of the characters that's just getting better and better as you go throughout Dresden. I don't think I can put her with these people in Amazing. I'm going to put her in Great, though, and pretty high. Next, we have Logan Nine Fingers, more iconic characters from the first Law Trilogy. I had never seen this art before, by the way. This art is awesome. Um, editing me, if you're not lazy and are actually going through this entire video, which I usually am. Can you please put that picture of Logan like big so people can see it? I'd never seen it before. Um, anyways, it makes him look like he has a spren. He doesn't. Uh, but don't worry, that actually is not a spoiler. That's from very early in the blade itself. And honestly, just isn't that relevant. Uh, and Logan Nine Fingers is amazing. Uh, maybe even higher than this. Um, no, he, I'm leaving him there. Uh, it's been a while since I read the first Law Trilogy, so I might this might be some recency bias, but I have him there in my head, very similar to Glockta. I, I don't care that much when bad things happen to Logan, but he's just a profoundly interesting individual. He uh, was... It might still be my second... No, he would be a top five first Law character? Um, maybe? I, I like Age of Madness more. But I like Glockta more than any of the Age of Madness characters. I think I like a lot of them more than Logan. But Logan has some of the most iconic sayings that you will ever find. Like, I actually probably say 
Logan Nine Fingers related sayings more than almost any other character when I'm actually talking, like in real life, uh, because I make first law references uh, to people who haven't read the first law, because that's just what I do. Uh, say one thing for me. Say I can make some references that people won't get. Um, yeah. So Logan is amazing. Next we get Loyal. The well, Loyal's a, Loyal's great. Uh, Loyal is one of the characters who has a criminally low number of page time, but uh, he's going to be low grade. We're going to put him here. No, that's Sol Wintrub. I just took you from the wrong spot. Uh, you would have been right below Loyal. You would have been there. Uh, but Loyal is going here. Uh, we're going to put him in between Croker and Boromir. You just, he's so charming. hes He's got to be one of the most charming characters. I know I was pretty hasty with deciding where to put him. I decided pretty quickly. But anyways, we move on. We've got a lot of Wheel of Time characters coming up. So uh, blame the people who picked them. I think this was Chris. So anyways, Matt Bloody Cawthon, the the lucky boy. He's got his dice. If, if you've only read the first couple Wheel of Time books or just don't like Matt, then I apologize because Matt is an all-time favorite. I love Matt. He, at times, was my favorite Wheel of Time character. He actually probably, after after book 11, he had probably edged out Rand and become my favorite Wheel of Time character, and then Rand, in the last couple books, just, like, beat that down. Um, he doesn't have a personality in the first two books. He's just he's just annoying in book one and two. But I, I loved him instantly from book three. I was like, this dude is so fun. Love him on reread as well. I've only gotten into the first five. Uh, he's the best parts of Fires of Heaven. He's just, he's wonderful. I love Matt. Always will. Next we have Gladstone. CEO Gladstone, primarily from the fall of Hyperion, who is a good character. I really like Gladstone. Uh, I don't like Gladstone as much as I like my favorite Hyperion characters. Uh, she definitely was interesting. She had some interesting decisions, did some interesting things. I'm going to put her in good, though. Um, I don't love Gladstone as much as I do like, you know, this person, also from Hyperion, who's going to be higher. Next, we have Moraine Sedai, the, the Gandalf equivalent from Wheel of Time, who... Uh, for the early Wheel of Time, like, it's my favorite character in Eye of the World by far, which is why I was totally fine with the show focusing more on her. A lot of people were like, oh, we're focusing away from, like, Matt. I was like, who cares about Matt in Eye of the World? But I love Moraine. Moraine is gonna go way up here. Uh, one of the most dynamic, wise mentor figures on the basis that she isn't, like, a multi-thousand-year-old wizard. She's just kind of like, yeah, she's magic, but she isn't, doesn't have the, uh, like, the experience that a lot of like multi hundred or thousand year old wizards does. Uh, so I think she's just one of the most dynamic wise mentors and is just iconic. And next we get Moog. Speaking of not super wise wizards, we have a Moog from the band who's fun, but forgettable. Like I remember some of his antics. I remember very little about his character. <clears throat> he liked owl bears. He had some good stuff. He's fine. Um, I feel like overall, the people picked for this list have been a lot better in terms of how much I like their character than the previous tier list. Anyways, we have Karen Murphy, probably the second most important character uh, in the Dresden Files, definitely in terms of page time. Um, the main person from the Chicago PD who Harry Dresden works with. Uh, Murphy is many people's favorite Dresden character. She is some people's least favorite Dresden character. She is neither for me. Uh, she is great. I definitely like people like Mab and Michael more. I probably like Lara Wraith more as a character. She's gonna be... Here. Uh, she's gonna be behind Geralt and above Euron. Uh, Murphy, if you've only read the first couple books, Mur Murphy's really annoying in the first couple books, but she just, she just becomes iconic. Like, you're gonna, well, I guess you don't have to trust me, because some people dislike Murphy, but I love Murphy, even if, uh, I, I don't love her as much as some other Dresden characters. Anyways, now people are really trolling me. This has got to be the same person who included Bella. Like, Nakomi. Nakomi is not a character. Like, Nakomi technically has scenes, but, like, Nakomi is a mystery. Nakomi is not a character. 
Whatever. She's going in the same spot as Bella. Next, we have Nick Andros, who is easily my favorite character in The Stand. Um, for those of you who don't know, I didn't enjoy... I don't love The Stand. Uh, I don't dislike The Stand. I just didn't love it. But I love Nick. Um, Nick... Every time I got to a Nick chapter, I was like, let's go. It's my boy, Nick, the deaf mute. Really the heart of that book. I like the good people. Um, and Nick... Nick is great. Um, yeah, Nick is great. We're actually putting Nick literally up here. Nick is wonderful. Nick is literally the reason the stand didn't get two stars from me. Like, Nick is the reason I m enjoyed the book more than I didn't. Uh, next, we have Nynaeve T. Almera Mandragoran, who's going to be very upset to learn that she's below Matt. Nynaeve... <sighs> this happened... Um, there was a broken binding... Twitter poll between and Amanda Rake and Nynaeve and I didn't know who to vote for. Um, they're so different. But, like, Nynaeve can be very annoying. Um, Reread Me has liked Nynaeve basically from the start, but both versions of me get really got annoyed by her stuff in book five. It was more the people around Nynaeve who were annoying, though. Which, Nynaeve would agree with that statement. Um... But her development is just so next level. <sighs> like, I love Rake, but Rake from Gardens of the Moon, like, for the series, is not exactly the most dynamic character. The same is true for Baez, actually. And the first law of Malazan people aren't going to like me, but, I mean, and the Wheel of Time people are going to be like, she should be like here. Yeah, I get it, if 90 is your favorite. Um, I'm putting her behind Shade. And above Baez. I love Nynaeve. Uh, she's she's my girl. She's one of my favorite Wheel of Time characters. She's my third favorite Wheel of Time character, in fact. Hint, Randall Thor. Gee, I wonder where he's going to go. Uh, and next we get Perrin Ibarra, who's a Wheel of Time character. That I was kind of good. He was never one of my favorites. He's some people's like favorite uh, for the early series. I liked Perrin. And then he kind of gets boring. And then he's good, but maybe not as good as he was early for Brandon. Um... I still really like Perrin, though. Perrin has some wonderful stuff. We're gonna... Perrin is not gonna be up here, though. Perrin is, like, kind of not... Just not an S-tier Wheel of Time character for me. I'm gonna put him below, like, Boromir. Um, he has some way better stuff than almost everyone in this list, I would say. Um, but he just has worse stuff. Um, screw it, I'm putting him... No, I'm putting him above Davin. I'm not, I can't put him behind Davin. Okay, next we have Piranesi. The, the wholesome dude who is wandering around for a couple hundred pages with some statues. And Piranesi is one of the character, is one of the main things that makes me love Piranesi the book, which was on my top 10 favorite list. It's not for everyone. I totally get, I like, I don't even know why I like that book that much. But I know I love these character, this character on the basis of being wholesome, on the basis of having like a really interesting premise, um, really interesting internal conflict. He is top of grade. Uh, next, we get Randall Thor. Who uh, is Rand going above Kenneth? So here's the thing: Rand, protagonist, fourteen books. I think the best character arc I have ever encountered. Um, yes, sorry, Fitz. Sorry, Jamie Lannister. Sorry, everyone here. In terms of development, I think Rand has you beat. Uh, Rand goes through so many different stages while all feeling like they're a believable way to go and still feeling true to his, like, at, to who he is as a person. Um, I like him from the start. I don't love him in the first few books, but, like, oh, my, he goes supernova. I'm leaving him here. I'm putting him above Kaladin, but I think Kennet, while Kennet gets way less time, I think Kennet just starts more interesting. Even though he has less development, Kennet is literally like I remember reading chapter one of Ship of Magic and being like, holy crap, that was so good. Like this Kennet guy is so interesting. I already feel like I know him so well and like he's such a unique character. So I'm putting Rand second. Okay, is that all the Wheel of Time characters? Man, the Wheel of Time characters were really together, like close together. This is just alphabet no alphabetical. Why did they all end up that close together? Whatever. Next we have Rant. 
who I this is not artwork for rant. This is just the cover of the God is not willing. There is no artwork for rant. I'd looked. Um, if someone here has talent and has read the God is not willing, please, um, please draw a rant. So rant, uh, who is kind of the protagonist of the God is not willing. Uh, for those who did not see my thoughts of the God is not willing, it's kind of split into two sections. One section was like the Marine focus stuff, which I thought was good, but like kind of mid tier Malazan didn't love, um, had some problems with the rant stuff was incredible because rant is like literally one of my favorite Malazan characters, probably top 10. I'm going to put him here. Rant is amazing. I'm keeping him behind Raycoid and Moraine, but I'm putting him above the guy Gavro K characters and Logan. Uh, I've only had one book with rant rant. Uh, if you come back in a couple years when his kind of story is more complete, he'll probably move up. He's my favorite part of the God is Not Willing. Um, wonderful idea for a character. Wonderful the way his character exploits the legacy of another character. And next we have Sol Wintrob, who has, I think, the best story in Hyperion, comfortably. He's not my favorite character in Hyperion. But when I say he's not my favorite character in Hyperion, I'm not using that as like a metaphor to say he's one of the characters I like less. I mean that as he's my second favorite character in Hyperion with the poet Martin being my favorite because he is, he's amazing, but we're going to go bottom of amazing. His story is like a 20 out of 10. His character at himself, like it's more about his story than his character, but he still is just, like a wonderfully conflicted suit. Read Hyperion. Read The Scholar's Tale. Oh, The Scholar's Tale is just mind-blowingly good. And next we get Stannis the Manus. Um, Stannis the Manus. Yeah. Uh, the younger brother of Robert Baratheon. Very stern. Man, his introduction in the prologue of Clash of Kings. It's more Melisandre's uh, introduction is amazing. Um, the way he can manage to kind of suck but everyone cheers for him. Like, how? not everyone, but so many people love Stannis. I think says it is. Stannis, Stannis is great. Um, this, you guys picked a lot of good characters for this one. It wasn't like the last one. There were some people I hated, some people I really disliked. This is less bell curvy. Um, but we're going to put Stannis... Where are we going to put Stannis? Um, above Boromir. Blow, above Loyal. Low croaker. Anyways, Teravangian, the the old man who I can say very little about from the Stormlight Archive, but the old man who is probably my third favorite character in the Stormlight Archives and will be in the all time favorite position. He's so good. Anyways, I can't say like anything about Teravangian, but he's he's so good. Uh, yeah. This artwork is also amazing. There's a lot of really good artwork. I'm going to link uh, to a Google Docs where I have all this artwork. For some of them, I just wrote, it's the official art. Like, I don't need to link you to this art for Gideon the Ninth. It's the cover of the book. Um, but the ones that were, like, fan art, I've linked to. Um, sometimes I couldn't find the original source of the art. I just found, like, the wiki where I got it from. So there are some spoiler stuff. So don't click on a link if you haven't, like, caught up to the series. Um, Tau. Protagonist of the Rage of Dragons. I really like Tao. Um, I have seen people say Tao like, doesn't have a character arc. I wonder if they read the same book as me. He not only has the external character arc of like training and becoming a better swordsman, I think he has he has like a faster character arc in the middle where he goes from like not really caring that much about sword fighting to having a reason for care. But then the way his priorities shift throughout the Rage of Dragons is, is I think done really subtly and not overtly, but like nothing, like there's so many things like in the later bit of that book that like early Tal, there's no way he would have made those decisions. And then I think his character gets even better in Fires of Vengeance. So I really like Tao and I will defend my boy Tao from the haters who claim he isn't a character who probably skim action scenes and so didn't realize that Evan Winter develops characters in his action scenes and he actually... I, I literally think you could just read the action scenes and be like, see char Tao's character development. Obviously, there's also quite a bit outside the action scenes, but um, I think he's wonderful. I'm going to put him here. And I don't even care. Um, I love Tao. 
He's great. And next we have Tenar, who is the more interesting of the two, in my opinion, protagonists in the world of Earthsea. Um, Tales of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. She's like the protagonist for Tomes of Atuan and Tihanu. And I find her more interesting than Ged. I find her more unique than Ged. Um, she's gonna go like here. Uh, yeah. And next we have the boats. We have the live ship Paragon and Vivacia, which are about to literally be placed just unreasonably high. Um, I want you all to go back, search into your memory, if you watched it, for my top 10 characters list, where for the honorable mentions, I said what would happen if it wasn't restricted to one brother, because that's right, the live ship Paragon is a boat and is literally one of my favorite characters of all time, and I'm putting him above Kaladin. I don't even care. He is literally a boat with more psychological depth and nuance and a more distinct personality than like 99% of characters in fiction, in my opinion. And you know what? Vivacia is an all-time favorite as well. Um, I don't like Vivacia as much as Paragon. Yeah, we're leaving the Vivacia there. Also, whoever picked the Vivacia, um, I managed to find one where she's turning away as she's being drawn. You know, she's a figurehead who looks like a person. It was very hard to find safe-for-work art for the Vivacia. Okay. Uh, I don't want to get... I, I, what am I talking about getting demonetized? I'm, I'm not even monetized. I can't get demonetized. Whatever. Um, I'm sure YouTube can do something to me. They can't demonetize me. Because what is dead may never die. And next we get Thomas Wraith. Another Dresden character who I can't talk that much about. Who I think some of the relationships he has are fantastically well written. Thomas on his own is great, but not a top-tier Dresden character. Like, I know it's like I'm putting him in great, but Dresden has a lot of my favorite characters. Uh, there's a lot of Dresden characters I like more than Thomas. Thomas is still great, though. Next, Tom Bombadil. So, um, believe it or not, like four people put Dom, Bom, Bom, Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil was actually supposed to be in my last video, as well as Andros Guile, um, but I just somehow missed them. And then I think three people put Tom Bombadil here. So, yes. Okay. Where the hell am I going to rank? Um, where the hell am I going to rank Tom Bombadil? Um, like, he's, he's certainly entertaining when you get him. And he's distinctive. But he just, play, like, he plays such a... I don't, I don't know. He's good. I don't know, like, he doesn't do that much. He's just not that important to the story. He's entertaining, whatever. Um, he has one note. That note is entertaining. You know what? I'm putting him in fine. Um, he has one note, okay? Yeah, that note is, note is entertaining and fun. But, like, go find a line of his dialogue. They're all in the same tone, okay? Whatever. Next we have Valka. Um, I prepared this before the new cover launch for the newest Sun Eater book, which will be Ashes of Man, which has really good Valka art on it, but this one's pretty good as well. Valka is... Why does this not have Hadrian? No one picked... Well, someone picked Hadrian. So the person watching this who picked Hadrian, thank you, you tried. I appreciate your effort, but I was not willing to cheat, and so I did not bump him up, even though I wanted to. Um... Valka, 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 Valka. You're, I mean, you're somewhere up here. Um, probably my second favorite character in the Sun Eater, but the Sun Eater is one of those where, like, the protagonist is my favorite character by far. Um, but Valka, I can't talk that much about Valka. You guys need to go read Sun Eater. Valka's amazing. Um, Twas a good time. Um, I was trying to find a, trying to fit her mannerisms into a sentence, and I'm failing to do it. Anyways, uh, everyone who's read Sun Eater know what's up. Next, we have Valen. Um, I don't think he's supposed to be the protagonist of Emperor's Blades. This was the read along we had with on Alan's channel. Um, easily one of my least favorite characters in that book. Uh, he had so much POV time. If he was like a side character, I wouldn't care that much. But he, I swear he had like way more POV time than the other two POVs behind. I might be slightly biased against Valen because 
he's kind of part of like an assassin SEAL Team 6 group who is just kind of like a human death machine. But like one of the sneaky ones. Anyways, I generally don't find like that type of death machine. Like the kind of Brent Weeks Night Angel. I haven't even read Brent Weeks Night Angel. But the kind of more assassin type of death machine who they are supposed to kill people. But they don't use like poison or sneaky. They just like don't wear armor. And they just like, you know, every all the other people they're fighting moves in slow motion. Valen, I do not find interesting, relatable, likable, competent, or competent. Like, I, I literally don't like anything about Valen. So, we have someone who's going to get thrown into the Masani. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. He's my least favorite character on this list. This art for him is stellar. I've only read one book of Emperor's Blades, so that could change if I was willing to read the others, but Valen did nothing for me. Like, he was incredibly frustrating to read. Um, it, it's partly also that I just think his plot had a lot of stuff that was nonsensical, but, like, he, he seems like the weak link for everyone in that group. How are you like it's supposed to be a death machine and are still this useless? Anyways, next we have Vasher, who is like the most important not main character in Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. And he's going to be in the Great Range somewhere. Um, don't get a huge amount of time with him. You get the prologue. We're going to put him here. Uh and also we have Virginia from the Red Rising trilogy. Uh, I don't know who picked this. Why didn't you pick Mustang? I don't know. I think someone picked Virginia because I, I don't know. Anyways, um, I don't remember that much about Virginia. I'm not going to lie. This character is not stuck with me. So I'm going to do what I did to Moog. But I feel like Virginia is probably a better character than Moog. So I'm just going to put Virginia in fine and move on with my life. I'm just, I just don't rem remember that much about Virginia. Give me one of the other red rising side characters give me mustang or severo i don't know um anyways that was fun um less people got thrown into celestial bodies this time which is a little bit unfortunate um but uh yeah i i'm i like how you guys choose these for me it's ironic that tier list videos are supposed to be like easy videos to make but because I want you guys to be able to do it and I go through the time of making all of these square and all the pictures like include the person's head um, and their name in a le le legible fashion that these are some of the, like the videos I have that take the longest possible. But anyways, I want you guys to do this. I'm going to link a list, uh, list eh, put a link to this tier list in the description and I want to see where you would put this. Obviously, uh, just do something like this. Just go like add a row below who uh new phone who this um for the people you don't know uh which i'm guessing for a lot of people is gonna look something like this guy's gonna be here a lot uh i hope the live ship people aren't but they probably will be um this person's gonna be this person this person this person this person this person, this person, even though it's Brandon and has no prerequisites, read the Emperor's Soul people. Um, everyone should know who Gimli is, obviously. Uh, maybe Greenbone, who knows? Um, Croker, Sad Black Company, Nor I'm gonna guess these people. I'm gonna guess people have read Stormlight but forget who David is because he's kind of a late introduction. Sun Eater, read Sun Eater people. Uh, Alara, Hyperion, this one you don't have to read. Um, the others I want you to read. You, you don't have to read Foundry Side. Um, I'm going to guess I see a lot of these people in New Phone Who Dis, but I await to see your versions of this tier list. Go forth, minions. Entertain me with your versions of this list. Bye, everyone.